with Mr. Tastic and in this episode I'm going to be talking about fast finishers in the art classroom. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. know what they're supposed to do next. So we're going to talk about different strategies for helping you out in terms of getting your fast finishers all organized so they can, can continue learning independently without being like, hi, hi, I'm done my work, what do I do now? Hi, I'm done my work, here I am, what should I do now? Um, and asking over and over again. So we're going to solve that problem right now. So let's get on into it. So number one is that you can create art centers. So much like you see in primary classes where they have center time, I like to make different versions for older grades or whatever grades you're teaching of centers. So art centers could be like um, remake a masterpiece where you have different pictures of like masterpieces and then they have to make their own version of it, right? Um, and have basically reference images and then they have some paper in there and different mediums and they can go create one. Or maybe you have different um, challenge cards available in there. Or maybe there are some grid draw pages in there. Uh, so it's a grid drawing center. Or maybe it's like a creativity challenge center. Or maybe it's like a poem prompt center where there's like different poems that they can create. And I work based on the poem. Whatever it is, um, you can put some different materials in there. Or origami center, right? Origami is a great one to have center. You can make up some different ones um, where um, you can... Uh, just have some stuff already pre-made, make, make up a center, and then they can go grab a bin and work on it. Work on that as they're when they're done, right? It can be make your art, if you're done, you handed something in or whatever, you've done your task for the day, then you can go to art centers. And then you can scale that for whatever grade that you're teaching. Okay, the next thing is to have, number two is to have a few activities that they know they can do when you're done. So um, if you're done, you could do like, for instance, sometimes I would have like read, relax, or draw. Um, but you could do like relaxing is fine. Like if they're doing no bugging anybody else, they just have their head down and they're relaxing. Like that, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> they're just relaxing. I want to relax. I just did all that work. My brain's tired. Um, but that does not mean I'm talking to my friends and bothering them or poking them with my pencils. I am not, not focused on anybody because I am relaxing. Otherwise, you need to go find an activity to do. Um, or they want to read some art books, maybe they want to do some free drawing, um, or you can have like three things they can do, like maybe it's like finish the pictures, which you can change out throughout the, throughout the year to different themes, right? Finish the pictures, um, again, changing them throughout the year. Uh, Earth Day, finish the pictures, Christmas, finish the pictures, spring, finish the pictures, back to school, finish the pictures. Um, maybe the second one is like sketchbook task cards or sketchbook free draw time. Um, or art choice boards that you have up and then you can change those out and they can be like prompts that they can do in their sketchbooks. Um, so basically like fast finishers, sketchbook stuff, or the last one could be grid drawing. Uh, and then you can scale grid draws for ages too, right? So you can do like your, prim your elementary and primary could be more like cartoony grid draws, right? Your traditional copy the picture grid draws, grid draws. But in your older grades, maybe they're going to have to do more like value scale images grid draws, right? Like a whole photograph grid draw in value, <laughs> right? So now it's not just, it's a, it's a much more complicated grid draw, right? And then you can do that for middle and high school. So you can do fast, finish the pictures, which are more creativity based, sketchbooks, or you could do um, grid draws. Now, if you're looking for any of those resources and you want them for any of the holidays and seasons, I do have them available and we're all ready to go. All of my finisher pictures are done for, I've created them for all the holidays and seasons. I've created sketchbook stuff, resources, and sketchbook curriculums. So if you want sketchbook stuff, um, curriculums um, with visual prompt pages and glue-in pages, tasks, um, or also have sketchbook task cards. I have, I have all kinds of sketchbook tests, <laughs> sketchbook resources, and I also have grid draws for in both the older level with the photographs. They're all my own original photographs. Um, and they're for all the seasons and some of the holidays. 
Uh, not too much of the holidays because the older kids don't do like St. Patrick's Day, I don't think. And it's really hard to find that many St. Patrick's Day pictures. Like I can't go out and take pictures of four-leaf clovers. They don't exist around me. But I've done them for all the holidays, um, for some of the holidays and a lot of the seasons. Like I'll have them in a beer and back to school and then all winter ones and fall and spring and summer. Um, for the older ones of all value scales, there's value scales on there so you can really copy and work on creating value. Um, and then also I have them as the cartoon ones for all the, literally all the holidays and seasons because I can do that for <laughs> and little kids want to do St. Patrick's Day and they want to do Valentine's Day <laughs> and it's fun for them, right? So I have them both and they're all my original drawings. Another thing is clip art with me. I draw all my illustrations are all things that I have drawn or photographed. I do my own everything. So it's all my own art is what I'm saying. It's my art. <laughs> it's not some generic clip art. Um, so, they, and so it makes sense for, it, it's in the style things that kids want. They're not just random things. So um, if they want to learn how to draw any of that, grab the grid draws, the sketchbooks or the finished pictures in the links below the video. All right, my question for you this video is what questions do you have when it comes to fast finishers and what you should do with them or what problems are you facing when you have with fast finishers in your classrooms? Please let me know in the comment section below the video and I will personally respond to you and help you out. All right, number three is to do art challenge cards. You can create some art challenges and put them on cards for your students. You can do like amazing race style, where they have to go complete one card in order to get to the next card and then eventually they get to the very end and then maybe there's a prize for, for them or something like that. Um, that way they're like gamifying your, the end, you know, your fast finisher stuff, right? They're like, yes, I want to do it, right? They're, they're, they're engaged, but they're doing it independently, right? They can't be bothering other people. They can't be asking you for help because you're helping the other kids in the classroom. They can't be loud or noisy because other kids were also nice and quiet when you were doing your work. So you need to be quiet and independent to be doing these activities, right? Um, so think about creating art challenge cards um, for your students. Um, I think challenge cards should be like either like hidden around the room, right? Um, or they have to complete one in order to get to the next one because it should be different than a task card, right? It's kind of like a task card, but it should be a little bit more challenging and you should make it gamified. It is like rewards. I don't know. Think about how you can make an art challenge card that way. Um, I also have, to, I have some challenge cards um, that just explore or reinforce technical skill. So if you're looking for some that, that are pre-done, that are reinforcing like elements of art or technical skill, I even have year long challenge cards, one for like an elementary version and one for your older kids um, that will be done for the whole year. So you wouldn't need to make any other ones. If you wanna check those out, those will also be in the links in the description of this video. All right. Number four is you can also just take normal task cards and then hide them around the room. So like I would laminate them and then like hide them under shelves um, and like around behind books, under tables, whatever. And then the kids have to go find a task card and then in order to complete it. So when you're done, go find a task card to get into movement and then complete that task card. Um, I think that's a, just a great way to just, in, you know, add some kinesthetic learning in there and some movement. Um, and then they can spend some time looking. <laughs> And then move them like once a month like go move them like okay, it's a new month I have new task cards out and I move them so that way it's re exciting right because it's gonna get boring after a while if they know where they all are so I gotta Reignite it by changing them every month and then just use them like the same task cards every year, right? Like color for, print them on different paper colored paper Clip them put them in like a November bag December bag January bag whatever and have them ready to go. And then they go back into their little clipping for their, or bag or whatever they have, envelope for that month. So, and then you just go reuse them every single year, right? Save you time. Don't plan, do, do the hard work once and be done forever. <laughs> All right. And then finally, um, I like to do a first, then, next, after in my classes. So, like, first would be like, we learn. And I put it, do these as magnets on my board. So I make print it out first. Then next after, and I laminated it and put some magnetic tape on the back, and I stick that on my whiteboard, and I'd have first, and then every day I would write in, we do learning. Then you do this. After or next, you hand it in. Um, after you do uh, free draw, whatever it is. You do art center poem, poem art centers, whatever. 
whatever you want them to do. So that way they don't have to ask you. They can do like, okay, I did first, I did then, I did next. Okay, I put my stuff in the bin, I put my name on it. After, okay, I can read the board and now I can see, okay, I'm supposed to do poem art centers. I'm gonna go do poetry and some art centers. Um, there. So that's what I would do um, to make it easy. Now, if you're looking for fully planned art curriculum and all the resources um, that you would ever need for an entire year of teaching um, with an integrated art teacher growth course and art community and art curriculum that has the elements of art and principles of design, artists and art history and different themes, art lessons. If you're wanting all of my art, a whole bunch of art resources, hundreds and hundreds of art resources um, and my annual grand bundles all included, make sure you check out my art curriculum that is open collective art curriculum it is opening for enrollment in august you can get on the waitlist right now so you don't miss the enrollment date by heading on over to artasticcollective.com or scan the qr code on the screen um and i will include a lot of fast finisher activities there for you as well um, but if you're looking for a fully planned art curriculum so that way you have your art resources ready to go for the year head on over to artasticcollective.com and then click a membership and get on the waitlist for my membership. Yes, the art curriculum, Artastic Collective art curriculum membership. Um, also, you can find the link to it in the description below the video or simply Google Artastic Collective and you will find it there as well. It opens in every August and every January, but make sure you get on the wait list so that way you can enroll when enrollment opens and you don't miss it because I only open it for five short days. So make sure you get on the wait list right now and don't miss out. All right, my friend, thank you so much for watching. Your next video to watch is Teaching the Principles of Design. You can watch that video by clicking the link above or in the description of the video, and I will see you in that episode. Please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel and share the video so that way I can help other teachers, but also it really helps me continue to do these videos for you. I can only do them if I have people actually watching them. <laughs> So please make sure you watch, like, and subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you in the next episode.